On August 8th, 2023, the state of Hawaii was on fire. On the island of Maui, wildfires sprang up in multiple locations across its sun-dried hills, parched by one of the driest summers on record. Ariel Quiros was in Lahaina, Maui's oldest town, and witnessed how the fires started. Yo desperté a las 5 de la mañana más o menos, cuando ya los vientos ya estaban así, eh, botando cosas en mi jardín y nunca en los pocos años que yo llevo en, en Hawái nunca había sentido vientos tan fuertes en Lahaina. Y dado la, el estado de los postes de, eh, de luz, muchos postes se cayeron, árboles se dieron vuelta. Muchos de esos árboles cayeron en los cables. La, la compañía eléctrica nunca cortó la electricidad. La, la electricidad por estas eh, chispas de cables en el pasto seco. Fanned by the high winds, the flames quickly enveloped Lahaina. A las 2 de la tarde, allá habían rutas cortadas por los postes en las rutas. Hubo mucha confusión y caos y gente atrapada y eh, hay gente que estaba haciendo luz. Y no era solamente el humo y el calor, era, era, eran objetos encendidos que empezaban a, a, a caer en el vecindario. Esa gente entró en pánico y empezó a, a evacuar con sus niños en brazos y con sus pertenencias en las manos. After the smoke had cleared, Lahaina was transformed. La devastación es todo el pueblo. The Lahaina tragedy cost 94 lives, the deadliest wildfire in modern U.S. history. And while the Biden administration has made $12 million of assistance available to more than 3,000 households that were burned in the fire, the Federal Emergency Management Agency estimates it will now cost $6 billion to rebuild. As to how that rebuilding happens and who leads the efforts is a debate that goes to the very heart of these remote Pacific Islands' turbulent relationship with the United States. The remote Pacific archipelago of Hawaii has been inhabited for over 1600 years, originally settled by the seafaring Polynesian culture, which stretches as far south as the Maori of New Zealand, they named the islands the Paia Aina, the land of flowers. Over the course of centuries, Hawaiian culture developed in almost total isolation from the rest of the world. Lahaina was an important cultural center. Today, represented by Tamara Paltin on Maui's County Council. Lahaina was the capital of the Hawaiian Kingdom for a period of time under King Kamehameha III before it was relocated to Oahu. And there's still many, many sacred sites, but it's it's not the buildings or the structures that make it sacred. It's, it's the location and the people and, and the way we interact um, that makes it sacred. Hawaii's first contact with the outside world was the arrival of the British explorer Captain James Cook in 1778. The Kingdom of Hawaii struggled through the succeeding century through various iterations of independent nationhood before the overthrow of 1893 and subsequent annexation to the United States in 1898. Following the Second World War and its importance in the Pacific campaign against Japan, Hawaii was given statehood in 1959, becoming America's 50th state. However, for many indigenous Hawaiians, that history is problematic. Some people get uh, defensive if um, you talk about Hawaii being an occupied nation. If we don't want to say a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag doesn't mean we hate all Americans, you know, I just don't want to say the Pledge of Allegiance until America does the right thing, you know. So it's, it's a very uh, unique situation. Today, the island of Maui depends on tourism, with visitor spending making up 40% of the island's GDP. But that stands at odds with the proud Polynesian culture of its original inhabitants. Kekoa Lansford is a native of Lahaina. We're, we're, a, we're a warrior culture, you know, we're a noble culture, but we're not a host culture. This idea of aloha, it exists, but it, the hotel version of it doesn't exist. Indeed, the true meaning of aloha to the Hawaiian people is what will now help them to recover from the tragedy of 2023. Aloha, 
it's a deep rooted concept in the Native Hawaiian culture. It's, you know, something that's like sacred to us, you know? It means love, you really love something. You don't change it, you don't take advantage of it, you don't abuse it, you don't molest it, you know what I mean? You don't hurt it. You help it thrive, you know? You help it live, you help it be happy. Whatever it is, you know, aloha. When the smoke settled over Lahaina, residents returned to view the damage. Incredibly, Ariel's house was still standing. Se salvó de milagro, ¿me entiendes? El edificio de enfrente estaba completamente en llamas, se redució completamente a ceniza. Yo tengo daños en las plantas de atrás por el fuego. La, el fuego literalmente saltó nuestras casas. De verdad, eh, es muy increíble. Si tú ves toda la devastación que hay alrededor, es eh, eh, muy increíble. But amid the devastation, the survival of his material possessions has been of little comfort to him. Fue muy complicado porque no nos podemos permitir eh, sentir bien respecto a nuestra fortuna. Que mucha gente alrededor había, a, había perdido sus casas, posiblemente sus vías. And while the fires may be extinguished, Lahaina town remains very dangerous. Incluso si nosotros tuviéramos agua y electricidad en las casas, no podríamos volver allá a vivir porque el, el material tóxico está acumulado en las alfombras, está en las paredes, está en las pinturas. In the ashes of Lahaina sit hazardous materials. I fully believe that it's toxic, you know, the arsenic, the asbestos, the lead, the diphorans, the benzene and things like that. We've heard from volunteers having adverse effects. One lady um, I had heard was coughing up blood after being there a number of days. Those working in the recovery effort have struggled. Kylie Adolfo spent three weeks following the fire, helping with the cleanup. Being down in the red zone, it, um, it just has a burning feeling in the chest, burning feeling here in my, my throat. Kekoa ran back into the fire on the night of August 8th to rescue those who were trapped. His heroic actions have left him sick. The night of, I came home and I immediately didn't feel well. Um, I didn't recognize it at the time because of the adrenaline, I think, but my heart was racing and I couldn't, couldn't really catch my breath. I couldn't breathe very good. And I, for the few days afterwards, I just kept coughing up a bunch of like black stuff and nasty stuff. So I went to the doctor and then they said, you gotta go to the hospital and I've got to take the medicine now. And um, yeah, doing, doing a lot better. I hope that it doesn't get to the point where I have developed cancer or whatever. It's scary, but I did what I did. I'm not regret nothing, you know. Come back and count 20 years later, 10 years later, and you'll see how many Native people are sick and sick with cancer. This has gone on for ages, for history. It's that history that is now leading many Native Hawaiians in Lahaina to face the toxic hazard rather than leave. Mucha gente se, se quedó ahí tratando de proteger, escéptico a, a, de respecto a las autoridades eh, y, y, y se están tratando de quedar ahí incluso con niños. Eh, yo, yo creo que es súper peligroso, la gente se está enfermando y está llegando al hospital por problemas respiratorios, no del humo, pero de los residuos que todavía están circulando en la jaina. There is a little bit of fear against the government. For those who have been evacuated from Lahaina, they fear that the toxicity may be used as a pretext to leave them displaced in the long term. You don't want it to be declared a disaster area because then FEMA will come in and commandeer all the land and, and Lahaina is not, we're not giving it up, even if it is toxic. They're gonna have developers come in. They're gonna cap all the toxic land and just rebuild because because we've seen it, it's history. They do it so many times, there's so many stories of the developers coming in, capping what, they, what the government deemed toxic, and then continue living here, but without the native people. How Lahaina is rebuilt is a major concern. You know, I've been hearing a lot about this. We want to be at the table of decision making. We are the table of decision making. That's our table. The community is doing its best to lead those efforts. One of the most respected voices of that is Kaipo Kekona, who started the volunteer movement for Lahaina in the wake of the wildfires. 
the healing and importance of our family values as, as a culture starts with your children. So, and so the mental health and that stability that we need to have our community stay strong starts with your children. Volunteer Caroline Aweloa is ensuring her community stays together by starting with the children's well-being. Very traumatic for kids. It's not something any parent wants to have to explain to their children. And how do you equip them to, to process all of that? I don't, I don't know. She's working to build a temporary school to bring continuity and strength to the most vulnerable. We're working together with the county to use this park and um, some very generous don donors for some 40-foot containers. We're going to place them and build roofs in between them to make alternative learning sites. This will be an educational resource center so that folks that have found housing on this side or are able to, to re remain on this side can have a school available for their children. However, the community is wary of overplaying their leadership. We don't really want to be affiliated too much with the government um, because, you know, there, there is a little bit of rage against the government. You know, we need to see it to believe it a little bit. Facing uncertainty and a federal government they don't trust, the community is uneasy. We just don't know what's going to happen. Gary Moores is one of Maui's leading real estate agents and says while the community believes there are plans to displace them, those fears may be unfounded. I don't believe that at all. As a matter of fact, we have hotel zoned land on this island right now that you cannot build a hotel on, but the county won't give you a permit. We have a housing crisis and the county is only going to approve houses or condos. I am 99.9999% confident that we're not going to see hotels going up in residential land in Lahaina. However, what the face of Lahaina looks like in the future will depend on the authorities. It's a wild card because our government makes a lot of decisions. I mean, they make all the decisions on what's going to get rebuilt, for example. Uh, down Front Street, there's a lot of properties that are right up against the water. Those are in the setback. So is the government going to allow them to rebuild there? We don't know. It might turn into a park. We just don't know what's going to happen. At an estimated cost of $6 billion to build back entirely, Lahaina has a long road ahead to rise from the ashes. I believe that uh, Lahaina is going to be even better than it was before. It was a beautiful place. It was very special. I've traveled all over the world. I've never seen a town like Lahaina. And I just pray that uh, we can get it back the way it was. community is pulling together to recover. Queremos volver a ser parte de la restauración de 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 la Jaina, de nuestro vecindario y de y, y de y del pueblo de la Jaina. Quiero ver que culturalmente se refleje la reconstrucción de la Jaina, la la gente originaria de de esta isla. This was a home Despite the tragedy that Maui has lived through, people here say Lahaina can stand as a beacon of hope for cultural strength through hardship. We need to be a part of the solution. We need to make sure the systems that get put in place understand our needs, understand our unique circumstances, and have well thought out plans to help us weather situations like this in the future. That's strength community leaders here say they will find within. The better for us is an old proverb that's ikavama mo, ikavama hope. Or the answers to our future lie in the past. But I think we need to consider that old footprint that gave us the desire of our capital and kingdom and the understanding that why, why that was important to us and build to that footprint with our current status in society that we live in today. Today, imagine if every property was built with solar power in that entire burn zone that we had. We would produce more power to, for our entire island just by rebuilding our town. You know, I was told a lot when growing up that Hawaii's gonna change the world. It'll only make, reinforce that and build it stronger. Ultimately, the devastation of Lahaina may leave this once proud Hawaiian capital in the hands of those who are most dedicated to it. There's a lot of like division amongst the smaller communities because so many people are transient, they have no interest in that. I know the Hawaiians aren't going anywhere. Try and be a Hawaiian in Wichita. It's not gonna work. We, it's our culture. It's like a, a father or a mother to me. They raised me. They made me who I am. We're not going anywhere.